Did you know that real screws can be made with 3D printing? At first I was a little bit skeptical about it myself, but once I printed my first screw it was game over from there for me. I began printing more, since now I was finally able to make things that I never thought possible, like this linear reduction screw clamp. For more explanation on this, check out the video I posted about it. I began printing functional assemblies held together only by 3D printed screws, like this vertical monitor stand. I've saved myself trips to the hardware store by printing these shoulder screws which hold together a yard tool. I'm sure this particular size screw is just not available anywhere. I've gone large with screws too, I think this one was one and a half inch diameter. Yeah, it had to be this big to function properly as a rifle rest height adjustment screw. All of these screws I've printed have worked well in their particular applications, but if I want to continue using 3D printed screws, I have to know what the limits are. How tight can I tighten them before they break? So I have lots of questions, but one main question that needs answered. To find this out, I'm going to have to apply some torque to a screw and push it to failure. I want to have an accurate method of measuring the torque values applied, so I went shopping. I was able to find this neat little tool the other day. Inside this case is a digital torque adapter. Alright, it was a while ago, you might have seen me post about it in mid-August. When I turn this thing on, the backlit screen grabs all the attention. You can see here that it's in trace mode. I'm going to want to switch it over to peak torque operation for what I'm planning on doing. The next thing is it looks like it's set to foot pounds, which is probably fine, but I'm going to change it to output units to inch pounds. Now this adapter is pretty cool. On one end it fits onto a 3H drive socket, and the other end connects to the ratchet, so it's kind of acting like a socket extension. Something in my DNA is telling me to test out the torque tester before I use it anywhere practical. So you can see here that it held the max torque of 12 inch pounds when I stopped. It will reset and start a new max torque when the fresh torque is applied. Here it shows 9 inch pounds. Me being a cheapo, I bought the cheapest version of this from the local Harbor Freight. Honestly though, this thing is pretty inexpensive for the accuracy they claim on their website of plus or minus 2%. The cheapest one had the lowest rated torque range of 5.9 to 59 foot pounds. They even threw this piece of paper in the case, where it looks like I got more accuracy than what I originally anticipated. I must have got the pick of the litter because this one tested within a half percent throughout the whole range. Thanks, Derek. Now that I unintentionally put out a full unpaid ad for this thing, it's time to plan out the model I want to test. I modeled from scratch this half inch hex head cat screw with 13 threads per inch. It stands at 1 and 3 quarters inch long with 1 and a quarter inches of usable thread. At the base of the threads, I included this transition chamfer to hopefully avoid any abrupt failures in this area. Then, under the screw head, I included a radius to further reduce stresses leading to failures. And to limit the friction between the screw head and the mounting surface, I added this washer face feature. I want this screw to give its best foot forward, so I've tried to minimize any high stress areas. Alright, now that the test model has been, well, modeled, I need to come up with a plan for testing. I wanted to know if wall thickness of the 3D print has anything to do with the torque it's able to withstand. So I chose three different wall thicknesses to test, 0.8mm, 1.6mm, and 3.2mm. I also wanted to test if infill percentage has anything to do with torsional strength. So like the wall thickness, I chose a few infill percentages. So all in all, it's going to be quite a few tests to see which component gives the most benefit. I'm going to have to number these things just so I can keep track of them better. It looks like I'm going to need a total of 10. I placed the screw model into Cura, and it became evident to me how easy it would be to generate the G-code and print all these really quick. You can see here that the wall thickness is set to 0.8mm and the infill at 5% gyroid already. When I preview this, you can see that it's basically hollow with a very thin wall. Switching to test model number 2 was as easy as changing the wall thickness to 1.6mm and regenerating. It's still basically hollow, but now the walls are two times thicker. Wall thickness becomes really evident in model number 3 with the 3.2mm wall. Jumping down to the next row with a higher infill of 30% is really easy. I'm just changing this field to 30. You can see right off the bat I have model number 6 done with the 3.2mm wall and 30% infill. Just to get a better idea of what this infill looks like, let's narrow up the wall all the way to 0.8mm. Kind of looks like a bowl of spaghetti. Okay, I'll just finish the rest of these up and it feels like I have a decent plan with G-code produced for printing. And next up is a fixture to test all the stuff I've shown so far. For this I thought heavily about printing it as well, but I've got a couple of things laying around that I can convert for use. The plan is to push the screw through this 2x4 where there's a wrench holding the hex nut. The wrench is held from rotating by this deck screw. Then to wrap it all up, I'll wrap the wrench with a velcro strap to keep it from falling apart. This screw I use here is a little bit short, but it's just for setup. I think this is going to work just fine. And I can't think of anything else to do beforehand, so to the printer! I'm probably just going to test the models starting with model 1, the 0.8mm wall and the 5% infill. 
Since this one is the thinnest wall with the most scares infill, I do expect this one to break with the least amount of torque. I'll slide a metal washer onto it just to try to keep the friction lower and keep it from sinking into the wood. I'm also using a stainless steel hex nut instead of a 3D printed nut. From my experiences with 3D prints threading into 3D prints, there's quite a bit of stiction. So this should help to better get the true values of the screw itself. Anyways, with that, I think it's time to finally get the screw in and test this thing. Any guesses on torques? Okay, I have the torque adapter set to peak torque mode and set to display inch pounds. Let's go. Well, that was quick. My guess was a bit higher than this. It broke right at 11 inch pounds. Let's get it out of the fixture and check out the nature of the brake. These two pieces weren't totally severed yet. Me pulling it out caused the remaining joining piece to stretch out like this. But the brake is as expected, right in the middle of the threads. So now I can start filling in the chart I made earlier with model number one failing at 11 inch pounds. Jumping to the next one with now a thicker wall at 1.6 millimeters or four extrusion lines and the same 5% infill. This one corresponds to model number two. I began numbering these as soon as I pulled them from the print bed. Unlike the order of this video, I just printed them one right after the other. These screws all look identical side by side, and I didn't want to take any guesses. Well, now that screw number two is done, let's get it in the fixture for testing. If I had one complaint about this torque adapter, it's that the display has a tendency of rotating out of view during use. But this one broke at 21 inch pounds, which is really less than half of what the torque adapter's starting range was. But at this time, I have no reason not to believe it's any less accurate here. Let's get it recorded in the chart as 21 inch pounds. And off to model number three with a 3.2 millimeter wall thickness and 5% gyroid infill. You can really see the wall thickness on this one. Anyways, let's get it labeled and into the fixture to be tested. I expected this one to be a little bit higher than the previous one with the thinner wall, but it reads 17 inch pounds. But if you caught in the video earlier on the previous push, it displayed 21 inch pounds. And this one broke in a completely different spot too, right underneath the head. I'm gonna get the other half of it out just to get a clearer picture of what happened. It almost looks to me like there's not a 3.2 millimeter wall here. This one may be slice or attributed failure. Anyways, I'm just gonna record the value of the chart as 21 inch pounds and decide later if I wanna go back and repeat this one. In the essence of saving you some time watching, I've ramped up the time lapses and showing the next row of three at 30% infill all at once. Get these things labeled up so I don't lose track of which is which. Man, it feels like the pace is picking up a little bit. All right, so number four with the thinnest wall and 30% infill. Let's get it into the fixture. Ready to go. Oh wow, this number seems to be coming up a lot. 21 inch pounds again. You can really see the infill in this one too. But now I have to somehow get the broken screw out of the hex nut. A lot of ideas came to mind, but I decided to use whatever this tool is to twist it out. It actually worked pretty good and didn't destroy it completely in the process. Okay, time to record that one into the chart as 21 inch pounds. And moving right into screw number 5 with 1.6 millimeter wall thickness and 30% infill. Let's just get to the torque testing. I want to keep the display in sight the best I can for these, as I don't want ridiculously wrong data. This one is slightly higher, continuing the trend upwards at 24 inch pounds. The brake is real similar to the last one as well, and I had to dig this one out of a nut. Let's get model number 5 recorded in the chart as 24 inch pounds and move on to screw number 6. This one is the thickest wall at 3.2 millimeters and a 30% infill. This one broke at 29 inch pounds and another one right below the head too. 
Anyways, I'm going to record this one at 29 inch pounds for now and it looks like the 3.2 wall thicknesses are giving problems. Continuing on, here are models 7, 8, and 9. Each are different wall thicknesses at 60% infill. Just labeling them each real quick and let's get to the testing beginning with screw number 7. I'm just trying to keep this display in view for you. And there we have it, 35 inch pounds. Let's get it recorded in the chart. On to number eight, 1.6 millimeter wall and 60% infill. I'm gonna say that was 43 inch pounds. This one didn't sever completely and I didn't pull it apart like the first one. I'll just record that one as 43 inch pounds before I forget and on to model number nine. And just a quick side note, for all these screws so far, I still haven't made it up to the range this torque adapter was specified for at 5.9 foot-pounds. This one almost made it into the range though with a yield torque of 63 inch-pounds. Yet another one I'm going to have to dig out, but the brakes are beginning to visibly look like textbook torsional failures. Record that one as 63 inch-pounds real quick before moving on to the last one. The last one should be a ridiculously high yield torque. It has 100% infill and is solid plastic. This one is model 10 in the charted plan. We're almost done. All right, I'm getting excited. Let's get this bad boy into the test fixture and see what it can do. Seventy-four inch pounds at failure. Not as much of an increase of what I thought over the last one. So that's it. That's the whole chart. And for the rest of the world, I've converted the chart to something understandable. Feel free to pause right here to take it all in if you want. Because now that the original testing idea has been completed, I want to add another aspect to it. I've already printed and tested ten different wall thicknesses and infill percentage combinations, but I printed each one of these standing on end with the screw pointing upward. I'm really curious to see what happens when I change the print orientation and lay the screw on its side like this. Instead of lots of pancake shaped layers and a seemingly most wrong way of transmitting torque, I want the layers to be spread parallel with the screw's axis if that makes sense. And then because this one is laying on the side I need to use supports. I'm going to call this uncharted test number 11, or the Roman numeral 2 if you prefer it that way. Anyways, it has its own label and that's all that matters. As I get this one set up, what are your predictions for it? Should it handle more torque? If so, why do you think that? I plan on printing this one with 100% infill as a single point of comparison between the last set of prints, just to see if it's worthwhile or not. Right now I'm in about the same range where the other 100% infill failed. No, wow, I was shooting right past it. Holy smokes, triple digits now. This thing's getting difficult to turn. Way to plan ahead. Okay, so now I have two complaints about this torque adapter. The first was that the display rotates out of view, and the second is that it turns off after about 30 seconds, regardless of whether it's being used or not. You'd think it would time out in an interval after its last torque output or something? Man, this thing is crazy. This nut is sinking into the 2x4. This is a lot of torque for this short handle wrench I chose to do this with. I gotta readjust.
Dang, the screen turned off again. Well, I lost a max reading. I'm going to rewind a bit and go with the largest reading that was visible at a whopping 145 inch pounds. This one is basically the same screw with just different extrusion orientations and it literally handles two times the torque. This is kind of amazing if you ask me. 